Well, hey, it's Jag. I just wanted to uh, take a minute and set it up a little bit for you. Uh, this is uh, a playthrough, an evaluation playthrough. Uh, it's not a um, demonstration of all the features of the Triwatt. Uh, you know, here's how it sounds clean, here's how it sounds mid gain, here's how it sounds high gain. Uh, I'm going to do that later. Uh, part of the reason is there's a couple of issues that I need to deal with. I'll get into that in a minute. Um, but the other reason is, um, like I said, this is an, an, an evaluation playthrough. Uh, this is my process anytime I get uh, a new piece of gear. What I do is I put it in my signal chain and use it with everything else the way that, uh, that I always use everything else. Uh, I figure that way I get the best idea how it's working um, with all of my other gear. So I haven't really uh, spent a lot of time going through this amp and playing with all of the features and and you know the the overdrive foot switch the effects loop uh, all of that uh, this is basically I just um, patched it into my rig uh, disconnected the high watt connected the tri watt right where the high watt goes and everything else is the same uh, so I will uh, I'll show you uh, what I have set up right now and detail a little of the signal flow first Here's the uh, front panel of the Triwatt, and um, I have the overdrive uh, turned on. Uh, as you can see, uh, I'm plugged into the uh, the link channel, so I'm running the normal and bright uh, channels in parallel. Um, I've got the volume controls for them uh, set at about two o'clock ish. Um, I've got the overdrive over there about uh, ten thirty or eleven o'clock right here. Uh, bass is at about 10 o'clock, uh, treble's a little bit above 10 o'clock, maybe 10.30, 11 o'clock, and mid is over at about 10 o'clock as well. Um, the presence is at 2 o'clock and master volume at, at 9. Uh, so that's um, the settings that uh, are on this amp uh, through this whole playthrough. None of that changed. Uh, I'm running everything through my uh, uh, my two notes captor as as the load. Um, I'll kind of detail how that works when I get over to my pedal board here. Uh, I'm not taking any, any sound from the captor. It's just there for the load. Here's the pedal board. Um, I don't. Uh, I'm not using a lot of this stuff for uh, this demo. I wanted this to be uh, as much about the triwatt as I could. Obviously, I have a, a crybaby from hell wah over here. Uh, I use that on a couple little spots in this, uh, just for some noises that I do filling between uh, a couple of uh, uh, vocal lines. Um, the Keeley fuzz head. Uh, I don't use it all in this. Uh, the tumness. I kick on for the solos, uh, the Wampler Tumnus Deluxe. I love that pedal. The uh, Golden Horsey, this is one of those uh, clone kits uh, clone clone kits that they sell on on eBay for like thirty five bucks. Uh, just for a laugh, I bought this. Uh, I don't know three years ago, I guess, and uh, I, I built it, and I was very surprised. I I love the way this sounds. Uh, so basically what I'm doing, the way the high watt's set up is it's, um, it's set for a very low gain sound. Even though the overdrive is on, it's essentially clean. It's just at breakup. And then I always use this, this golden horsey to, uh, to push things over into a, a, a mid gain range. So, uh, that's what's going on with this. Um, so that's on on all of the tracks that I play on this demo. Uh, there's the overdrive foot switch for the tri -watt. Like I say, that's on for the whole thing as well. Um, I've got the treble turned all the way down. I usually don't have it there. It just seemed like that really sounded good today. Uh, and then the uh, the output uh, is, is up about halfway. So uh, I've got the gain giving me some clipping here. Uh, treble is, is down, kind of taming the spikiness. And then the output is uh, juicing the front of the amp a little bit. Uh, so you can also see my HX effects. The only thing in the HX effects that I use 
uh, on this demo is this patch that I call Souls. That's a specific effect that I use on one of our other songs from the new album. Uh, but I also use it uh, at the the uh, in the second verse on uh, Black Frank, the song that I'm I'm playing in this demo. It's an octave divider. It's um, actually the uh, the whammy emulation in the HX effects set as an octave divider. Um, it's about twenty about 75% wet, so it's more the low octave uh, coming out there than the uh, dry signal passing through, and that comes in 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 verse 2, it's on the left. I didn't turn on any of the other uh, effects in this, so, uh, and then uh, out of the HX effects, I go into my cab M a patch, uh, it's basically just a 412 selection greenback cabinet. So I'll deal, I'll detail how how I have the flow set up with this because it's a little bit different than I think some people would use. So um, the guitar goes into the Crybaby from Hell. From there, it goes into the guitar input of the HX effects. Then I use uh, uh, loop one. Loop one goes out uh, and it goes in to the Keeley fuzz head, then from the fuzz head it goes to the Tumnus, from the Tumnus it goes to the Golden Horse, and then from the Golden Horse it goes back into the return of, of loop one. And the reason I do that is for the flexibility. Uh, that way I can put some of the effects in the um, HX effects before my gain and overdrive pedals, and I can put some of the effects after. So for example, I like to have uh, things like flanger, chorus, uh, phaser, uh, the octave divider, uh, a lot of those effects uh, I prefer to have in before my gain devices. I just uh, like the sound of that. I know a lot of people like their modulation effects in particular to be after um, the gain effects in either in the effects loop of the amp or b before the speaker, uh, uh, before the IR uh, loader or even in post. Always I put my delays and reverbs after those effects. Um, I prefer them after the amp as well. And that brings us to uh, loop two in the HX effects. Loop two in the HX effects goes out to the input of the triwatt. Uh, then uh, from the triwatt, uh, I take the uh, line out from the uh, two notes captor X back into the return here. So I can also change where my amp head is in the signal flow here. Um, oftentimes I will also have the cab M in that flow as well. And when I do that, I usually send to front of house and, and our inner system through, uh, through this direct box up here. Today I'm not doing that. This is actually more typical of the way I use it. Um, I have, like I said, the, the, the triwatt, uh, captor eight, um, in, in the second loop. And then from the output of the HX effects, I'm going to the uh, input of the cab M, and then I'm taking uh, my direct line from the cab M uh, into uh, my digital audio workstation. So that's uh, that's the basic signal flow there. Uh, so again, through all of this, uh, this golden horse is on, and the triwatt is at a, a very low gain, just on the edge of breakup. So basically, we're doing a pedal platform here, and then I kick the top this in for solos. Uh, the only other thing, like I say, I use is the uh, wah for a couple of little um, fill noises and the octave divider uh, on the left side track for um, verse 2. Up here on the computer, you can see uh, these are the settings that I have for uh, what I'm using in the uh, Cab M right now. So I'm using a, a, a Celestion G12M greenback uh, closed 412. Uh, this is a Dyn IR from Celestion for the two notes gear. I have a little bit of EQ on here, just rolling off a little bit after uh, 60 hertz, just to get rid of a little rumble. Enhancers turned off. I I do have a little bit of the reverb on, um, nothing too, too extreme, you probably won't even notice it. And then preamp, power amp, gate, those are turned off. Uh, I'm using a 421 uh, mic, and mic B is a, a FET 
47 condenser mic and they're both um, set uh, close basically right up on the cabinet uh, the 421's uh, a little off axis the uh, the FET 47 is uh, is uh, right on axis so that's the settings in the two notes cab M again none of these uh, these settings change so as I said um, the uh, playthrough that I'm doing um, to evaluate the triwatt is uh, actually to the uh, session tracks for a song from our most current uh, album, One Soul Thrust's most current album, which is called Slaves to the Sky, Masters to the Mess. Uh, the song in particular is called Black Frank. Uh, so what I did was I brought up those session tracks, I took out all my guitar tracks, and I basically uh replayed those uh, uh you know a little bit different kind of how how i play that today uh if you want to hear the track in its finished form uh it is available um i think you can stream it on spotify it is on we are on itunes we're you know all all the places everybody else is so you can look up the studio versions of those tracks if you want to compare it to what i'm doing today in the solo section i did leave uh salem's rhythm guitar track uh just under the solo section salem our our leader our singer our songwriter uh has a certain style of playing guitar and a certain tone that it just to me it just kind of makes uh it makes the sound of a lot of our uh, uh a lot of our tracks i just can't really approach the kind of feel or sound that she gets on those so i really felt when i did the solo section i wanted to just have this all the guitars be just uh the triwatt but i couldn't leave that out uh under the solo it just didn't sound right what i was trying to play underneath it so um in the solo section that is salem's uh rhythm guitar track um and that's uh her playing her uh i believe her paul reed smith uh through a really sweet 67 blackface basemen she has uh and that was mic'd uh through a real cabinet with a four uh hmm with a 57 sm57 uh so that's there up until the solo it's all triwatt so that's the detail um basically uh what you hear on the playthrough is the way um i heard it in the cans when we were tracking it so if you've ever wondered what uh the musicians are listening to when they're recording at least in this case i was listening to what you hear now and uh so essentially what what i'm what i'm doing here is is how i rehearse these songs uh and that's basically what i'm doing is just playing through uh another thing is i haven't i haven't played this song in about five months uh so what i did was um i basically just uh took a few guitars i wanted to try a couple of different guitars and i just did um uh, I took four guitars and I did two takes each all the way through just to make sure I had enough stuff and I'll uh, intersperse that stuff uh, through the uh, through the playthrough so you'll hear slight differences um, how the different uh, guitars react to the triwad uh, it's not the way obviously that we would mix uh, final mix a song but it does give you some ideas uh, the solos I recorded uh, separately so I had uh, I had the takes of the four different guitars uh, the solo uh, I played on what is sort of my main uh, recording guitar it's a sunburst Telecaster uh, style guitar that's one that I built as well and that one just has a, a really uh, a sound that everybody who works with us likes and uh and and i like uh, i think i said before it's not my favorite guitar to play but it's got a really great tone uh so the solo is that guitar um the last thing that i'll i'll cover is um another reason that this is an evaluation playthrough and i didn't mess around a lot with the settings is there are a few issues uh with the triwatt two issues in particular that i need to deal with before i feel i can do a true um walkthrough of the features so i will do that down the road 
they are issues that that would stop me from getting the most out of a uh, a demonstration of the features of the amp and that is um the foot switch or, or the overdrive itself uh i'm happy to say the the foot switch the overdrive board the relay board that that all works fine if you watched my other video where i said i had some problems my solution worked so that's good um but i do get um oscillation uh, i do get some squealing feedback if i turn the overdrive um up beyond about two o'clock i would never really use it there anyway but um it's just something that i need to look at and deal with and it's it's probably probably lead dress um there's a few things that you can do to deal with that kind of thing like i said i i wanted to build the amp the way that trinity specs it see how it comes out and then i'll deal with any issues that come up uh so that's one um i i may deal with it uh, uh by actually lowering the gain of that stage it actually gets a little too overdriven for my purposes anyway um so i will do that and i'll probably detail that when uh when i get it done the other issue uh which actually concerns me a little more is with the the effects loop uh board um there's only really six wires uh that you solder on there the effects loop uh board comes already pre-built and you just connect it in so you connect a ground wire you connect a wire from b plus to power the board you connect two wires for heaters for the tube on the board and then you connect the input and output of the effects loop so there's not much that you can do wrong <laughs> with that i get a lot of hiss from the effects loop i would have expected some but not quite this much it's 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 quite a bit and i'm a little bit concerned about that whether there might be a problem with the effects loop board or whatnot um i've been on the trinity support forum there's some suggestions for what to do about hiss in the board so it is a it is a known problem um i've tried a couple of things which didn't really change the hiss too much and i haven't really had a chance to dig into it myself uh so i'm going to look into that uh probably contact steven at, at, at trinity just to to see um, what the feedback has been on that board I know they've had it for a while and uh, it's entirely possible there's a problem with my board uh, it's just a little too hissy if I bypass it the amp is very very quiet if I uh, put the loop in uh, whether I have pedals into it or not which I my understanding is it bypasses if you don't have anything in it but when I don't have the bypass switch on I get a lot of a lot of hiss um, and to the point it's unusable with that amount of hiss so uh, hoping to resolve those two issues um, uh, regarding a noise uh, when I first uh, I'm very pleased with the amp uh, aside from that uh, when I first turned the amp on I thought I must have done something wrong I wasn't you know any amp will make a little bit of noise or a little bit of hum or a little bit of hiss and I turned this on I had to get my ear right up to the amp to hear hiss I, I really thought that that I had done you know something was wrong in there um, but no it's it was fine this is a super quiet amp it doesn't hiss or make a lot of background noise so uh, again you know notwithstanding a couple of of what i consider minor issues i'm very happy with this amp um it's uh it was a, a a relatively easy build it's fairly complex if you haven't built an amp before i would not suggest this as an amp for somebody to build as their first amp especially not with the overdrive relay board or the um or the effects loop board um you you can run into some issues there as i did um but relatively speaking it was a fairly fairly smooth and easy build um i'm new to doing the youtube content creation i've never um never filmed a, a, a myself building an amp before um and i'm really not used to an amp build taking as long as this took and that's not anybody's fault but mine for for filming this if i hadn't been filming this i could have probably done this in my spare time over two weeks uh as it is i think i'm at about three and a half months since i started building it and that's of course because the rest of your life gets in the way on things like that and and filming it added a whole other level of things to think about and do while i was filming so uh hopefully that will get better as time goes on uh it's been a real learning experience and i'm going to do more of this um but we'll get into that in another video and uh we'll see you on the next video